Hello, and welcome to this OneChart video tutorial on how to navigate the OneChart Table of Contents, the main roadmap of the patient's chart. The Table of Contents is located on the left portion of the screen once you have established a relationship with your patient and opened their chart. Although I'm currently logged in as a medical student, the steps covered in this tutorial can be used by any user in any solution. Today, we will go over reviewing a few of the key tabs within the Table of Contents, such as the Overall Acute Care Workflow, Results Review, Order Profile, and Documents and Notes. We'll also review some of the filters associated with these functions, which will allow you to customize the information displayed on the screen. First, upon opening a patient's chart, what displays are a series of M pages. These M pages are divided into various groupings of information, as well as having distinct and separate tabs to help guide workflow. Notice the tabs across the top portion of the screen, indicating admit, manage, and discharge processes. These tabs will help guide workflow for these specific phases of a patient's stay. Additionally, you have the ability to customize these tabs by moving them around into an order that is more pleasing to you. Simply take one of the tabs, and drag it across the top, and you'll see that the order has changed. If there happens to be a category that you do not wish to keep on the tab bar, you can always click the X to remove it. Notice the ICU summary page has now gone away. I'm going to put my inpatient summary back all the way to the left, and to recall any of the tabs which you have deleted in the past, click on the plus sign, find the available view in the list that is now displayed in front of you, and once we click on it, for example, I will pick the ICU summary once again. Notice that the ICU summary tab has now returned. This too can be moved around to any location that you want, but I'm going to keep it at the end because I want to have my admit, manage, and discharge process tabs all together. As I select either of the admit or manage tabs across the top portion of the screen, make note of the various categories displayed on the left and corresponding data to each of those categories on the right. As you scroll through the available data, make note that as you go through each category, the system lets you know where that category is on the left-hand side of the screen. As we review each category, we also see a series of filters available to help narrow the search and control the display. For example, the Documents section has filters to switch to seeing documents for all visits, only the last 24 hours, or by clicking the More dropdown, you can specify other time periods. Additionally, any category that has a plus sign displayed can take you directly to that function if the plus sign is clicked on, but more on this later in another tutorial. I'm going to now return to the Inpatient Summary M page by clicking on the appropriate tab. In reviewing this screen, we notice that some of the sections are expanded and some are collapsed. As your patients have more and more data recorded, these sections will potentially grow larger. A quick tip to see all of the available sections is to navigate to the right corner of this M page and click the icon that looks like a list or a newspaper. Doing so opens a menu of available options. By selecting the View Layout option, this allows us to change the number of columns that are displayed on the M page at any given time. By selecting the option for Two, you see that our display is now changed to two columns of data as opposed to three. To return to the three columns, we can either select three, or if I simply click on Reset Layout, my screen returns to the original format. I'm going to once again click the icon, and this time I'm going to select to and leave that as my display. If on the screen now we wish to move things around, I can do so by clicking on the drag and drop option, which puts a little check mark next to that particular option, and then I'm free to move the columns around that I wish to see. Notice my cursor has now changed to a crosshairs, which will allow me to click on a particular category and drag it to another location on the screen. Once I see a black box in the appropriate location, I can drop the category 
by releasing the mouse button and my category has now changed to the left side of the screen. Additionally, if I wish to get a full view of all of the available categories, I can return to my icon and click it, and this time I can click on Expand and immediately follow that by clicking Collapse, which collapses all of my options. If I wish to move further columns around, I will continue to do so by clicking on a particular option once the crosshairs cursor has displayed and drag it over to the other side of the screen. When I have made all of the changes that I wish to keep, I'm going to return to the icon and click it once again, and this time remove the drag and drop option by clicking on it again, removing the check mark, and this will save my changes. Keep in mind that if you did not remove the check mark on drag and drop when you left the screen, the system will revert back to the original setting. To further control what's displayed on the screen, if I return by clicking the icon, I can click the option for components and I can remove some of the categories that I might not wish to see. For example, if I wanted to remove family history, I would simply select family history to take away the check mark. And as soon as I drag my cursor off the option, the system automatically refreshes and removes that particular option. I'm going to return, click on expand and collapse, and now you'll see that family history is no longer displayed. To put it back, I would simply select the Components option, reselect Family History, the system refreshes, and Family History is once again available. We will now continue by navigating to the Results Review tab in the Table of Contents. Here you will immediately be shown any recent results as shown within the Navigator section of the screen. Notice the tabs across the top allowing you to zero in on certain key result groups such as labs, micro, and diagnostics. This screen also shows us another customizable filter. Anytime we see a bar with a date time range specified, this filter can be changed. Simply hover over the bar and right mouse click to see the options. Notice that you can specify a date time range or you can select today. Please note that any filter change you make here is only a temporary one for as long as this patient's chart is open. Once you close the chart or log out of one chart, the default of clinical range will return. Notice the flow sheet category section. The default is quick view, although there are a variety of different views that can be selected. Keep in mind that whatever choice you make will remain in effect until you change it again. The system will not automatically return you to Quick View once you exit the screen. Next, we will click on the Orders tab. Doing so opens the patient's order profile. As with any screen in one chart, we are driven from the left side of the screen in choosing a category to the right side of the screen where more specific data is displayed. Notice that having opened the order profile, the available space on the screen has been reduced so that now the orders view can display right next to the table of contents. If you wanted to have more real estate available on the screen, you can always pin back the table of contents by clicking on the push pin icon on the menu bar. Doing so pushes the menu to the side of the screen so it's no longer seen. To recall the table of contents, you can do so temporarily by clicking on the menu tab or permanently pin it back once again by clicking on the sideways push pin. Next, this screen also has a filter available as indicated by the blue wording that starts with displayed. This filter is important because this will control what will and will not display on the order profile. By clicking anywhere on this line of text, the advanced filters pop-up displays. The default settings are for all orders five days back. You can customize these filters to whatever works best, but keep in mind that if you don't see something on the order profile that you think you should be seeing, always come to the Advanced Filter screen and review your selections because they do not revert back once you sign off. The Active and Inactive status sections of the screen are quite self-explanatory. Simply remove the check from any option that you no longer wish displayed, or in the case of including more than the last five days of orders, you can either select the radio button to include all days, or simply update the numeric value to a specific number of days. The next filter setting which is important to make note of is the one option found under Miscellaneous. By selecting the checkbox for Show Individual Instances for Continuing Orders, 
This will allow the system to display all individually scheduled continuing orders. I will select this option and then click Apply. Notice that when we are returned to the order profile, a sideways triangle now displays next to some orders. By clicking on this little icon, notice that displayed below the parent order are all of the scheduled child associated orders. This allows you to see the actual status of each individual order action, no matter if it's in a patient care order, a diagnostic, or a lab order. If you no longer wish to see each of the scheduled individual actions, simply re-click on the triangle icon and the option now is collapsed. Next, we'll navigate and select the Documentation tab within the Table of Contents. There are actually two tabs that can be used to not only review, but to add documents. The first is Documentation, and when we select the Documentation tab, this opens the list of available documents in reverse chronological order. Notice that what we see is the service, date, time, and subject columns. However, there are additional columns of data available, and if I click on the scroll bar at the bottom, I can see what those are. For example, we see type, facility, the author, and what the actual status of that document is. To review a document, simply select it from the list, and it automatically displays on the right portion of the screen. If you double click on the document, this will open the document in full screen view, allowing you to review it in its entirety, or if it's your document, you can continue working on it. Your security level would determine what you can and cannot do to a document at any given time. To close the currently open document, click the X on the tab associated with the open document. You're then returned to the complete list. The other way to review documents is to select the Notes tab from the table of contents. The difference with this function is the added filters available at the bottom of the screen. Notice that the default is to display documents by type, where each type of documents has its own folder. However, you can filter by status, date, performed by, or by encounter. A popular choice is when looking for documents that you have created, select the performed by, and then each individual user is displayed as a unique folder. Double-click the folder to see all the documents created by that particular user. How to add, update, and manage documents will be reviewed in another tutorial session. This concludes the basic tutorial on how to navigate the table of contents within a patient's chart.